Hello everyone, welcome back to the episode of our tactic tests, and today we have a good one for you. We have Queen's Park Rangers, uh, one of my favorite, if not favorite, English teams of all time. I will always have a soft spot for these guys, as they just... No, there's something about them that I adore. I, I had the opportunity to internship with the Amazing Club when I was in college, and they, to this day, have been an awesome team for me. I've been able to go back and and see people and stuff when I've been back to England. And to me, it's a club that means the world to me. Um, it's my first chance to work in like pro football and all that stuff like that. So I love them to death. And I felt that as much as I want to do something else for the 1K subscriber special, this to me is the most fitting 1K subscriber special. I've made it now in terms of I can make money on YouTube doing football that I love. Why not do it with the team that is the team that gave me my first true break in football. So Fitting dynamic here, in my opinion, for the way that works. But we are here to talk about Marti Fuentes and the amazing, amazing job the Spaniard has done at QPR. I cannot be... I, I, like, I'm excited to watch this team every week now. Like, I can't watch them every week. F you, uh, ESPN Plus, you suck. I hate you to death. I pay every year for you, and you make me cry every day. Um, please feel free to drop your hate on ESPN Plus. Go abuse them. They do not deserve... The, they don't they don't deserve to have these sports uh they ruin them especially football they ruin football espn fc is the worst piece of shit i've ever seen in my life but i love these guys i love watching them i'm so excited every week like i'm confident they can pick up points and do well i think under steve fuentes qpr would be in like eighth or something like that if uh his whole if he had been in charge from the start of the season uh if the season started when he was appointed i mean so he's amazing he's incredible and i love it but we are going to talk uh, his tactics. So this is what it looks like. Um, there's some player instructions. It's a little interesting. Um, it's an odd one, but you know, I really like it. It makes me really happy to see. It's an exciting tactic. There's stuff I think QPR need to do better with their teams, but I really like what he's done. I really like the way it plays. It's an interesting tactic. The way the inverting happens, the way the out, uh, the, uh, outverting, uh, I don't know if that's a word, but the inverting of the, um, left back and the outverting of the right the left center mid uh the way chair drops in and creates stuff again we can't really do that with chair but we can do our best but yeah i mean to me it's it's an awesome tactic i love this thing it's brilliant and yeah i'm excited to show you guys how it works we're going to talk a little bit about what happens we're going to talk a little bit about some clips then we'll get into how the team did and uh just a little bit of that and then we'll have our outro and i'll have a little thank you guys for everything else so Throw the 1K, 1K subscriber special and get things going. Okay, everyone, it's time to talk about QPR and no style of play. Now, one thing to note that I did mention before is that there's going to be issues when it comes to actually properly implementing the style of play that this team has into FM. Now, this is for a few different reasons, but the biggest reason is Ilyas Chair. Now, Chair is the last person to say has a position on the field. If you look at his heat maps, if you look at the way he plays, he is all over the pitch there is not one spot that he occupies he is in just totally different areas all the time he will be in this role and he will pop up here to have one twos in the middle he'll end up over here helping position he'll end up over here in the attacking third and so that's that also influences this position here which then is impossible to had properly as well because their role changes based off the scenario now unfortunately when you're simming every single game it's hard to, and it's also just impossible to get something to work adjusting scenarios within the game. As much as we want to have stuff be adjustable, there's no way in this game you can design an inverted wing back in some scenarios, but also to overlap as a wing back in others, or to have your inverted winger end up on the opposite side of the pitch. It just doesn't work. And it's similar to that kind of relationism thing we talked about where things like this aren't possible like they, they aren't able to be done in fm and it's one of the good and bad parts about the game fm is a very positional based game uh real life football is not so there's some of the issues when it comes to recreating the tactical schemes but this is the best i feel you can do with it now what we're going to do is talk a little bit about the build-up um a little about things we won't go in depth into everything 
uh, than this one because, as I said, it's going to be impossible to truly recreate what Sifuentes has the team do. But I'll explain the bits that are possible to do in FM, and I'll show you the bits that I was possible to recreate with it. So we'll, we'll go through a bit of that. But um, mainly to let you know, QPR set up in a 4 2 3 one. That is their main shape. That is the main way they look to set up and the main way they do things. They are a team that likes to exploit the wide areas. You see this a lot through the team. They like to put a lot of crosses into the box. They have big forwards. They just signed Michael Frey from Antwerp, and they have London Lyndon Dykes. Armstrong's not a real, uh, not really one, but you know they have guys that are like this. They're guys that are big. They like to get on crosses, and keep your like to cross a lot. This is very common. Chair loves to get down the wing here and cut back and then whip across in like that, and it's super common to see Willock will get down the line or Smith and cross from the byline. So. The, the team likes to cross and like to do that a lot. So because of that, they build into the wide areas heavily. And there's lots of opportunities for them to build in kind of these of areas of the pitch here. Really common that they build kind of in these areas here. I'd say there's a lot of stuff that you see this team do in these areas. So you'll see a lot of the stuff being done there. And then maybe the little extra bit on, oh my God. in these areas here and the little extra bit might occur over here or over here but generally it's these areas where those are the balls be pumped into the box or a ball played into this middle area here where they recycle it around or are able to take a shot or play one or two passes to get someone in but that's mainly kind of the main things they look to do they do look to build from the back as well and they press in a mid block and that's the things we're going to talk about talk a little bit about the way they build out a little bit of the possession that's interesting about them what kind of makes them neat and then we'll talk about um about their mid block and how they defend in that so just a little overview, which we discussed then, but let's get into things first. So the big thing we want to talk about is the build out. The team build out pretty basic to most teams. It's nothing special. You'll see these guys sit here, the goalkeeper in the middle here with the ball. These guys kind of in these positions here, usually Powell higher than Cannon as this guy tends to shift out wide. He's not as he's kind of like, they're kind of like this. Times chair tucks in heavily already. Um, Willick tends to shift wider. This guy tends to tuck in. And you kind of have this awkward shape here, usually is what you kind of see. There's this two, one, th two, one, three, one kind of shape. It's awkward, but it's, as we explain, it makes sense. So the ball's played to either one of these two guys. And usually what happens is, is that he'll, this guy will shift left or right based off pal. Powell will stay kind of high and wide um, if need if they're going to play into Dixon Bonner usually or uh, in this last game last game um, Hayden will play into him here he'll get the ball here and then him and Colback will look to create one twos before Chair or the ten like Hodge will drop in and they'll then use a triangle here to help move the ball forwards with quick passes. Most of the time, usually Chair drops into this area and they combine with these quick passes to help move the ball to a side of the pitch. And they'll all transition over. And as they transition over, the team moves up and you get the team transitioning into this kind of shape here. So almost shifted over and Pal inverts here. So Pal would invert here. You have a lot of room, a lot of bodies together. The striker here, always another thing to quote, the striker is always looking to get into these half spaces. They're really, really big on the runs into the half space like this and like this. You'll see in the, op in the video clip of the goal that I have saved, of where the striker, the QPR defending deep, the striker makes a run into this half space here, and then is aided by another player making a run. They'll look to move the ball to the side. These three will develop into, into a back three. So you'll see these guys kind of possessing the ball in the back. The, the shape over here, chair, hodge overneath, pal inverted, and they'll play the ball through here, trying to get it to this wide area here. So they'll kind of move across. Cannon will help. You'll get these wide. Usually Hayden will be around here. Powell will be kind of inverted chairs kind of in the like the middle 10 spot here and they're kind of going to look like this almost Hayden kind of covering defensively these guys having somewhat of a uh, triangle on the wing here where they can pass between them now usually this is around the time the 10 is the one that helps create the triangle as they move further up the pitch uh the 10 will be in the main area to create the triangle you will have these guys now being the main triangle players and they will try to transition it kind of going down the line to the winger who will then try to drive forwards and get the cross in and that's kind of the right side. It's not as strong, it's not as basic. It's a lot more of getting the winger in a position where you can beat the guy one-on-one -on -one and get it in. Now, the thing that makes this side of the pitch slightly different is 
With Chair, Chair will invert heavily, and when he inverts heavily, he is almost playing as the 10. Like, he is legitimately in the middle of the pitch. And that leaves a lot of space on the opposite side. So what happens is if the team can't go forwards, they will recycle possession. So they'll play it backwards, right? Chair will then outward. He will go really, really far wide, right? He will go to the touchline. Powell will kind of sit inside. You have the other DMs. Cannon will drop a little deeper here. And you'll get kind of a back three created with Cannon. You get these three guys in the middle here. You almost get like a 3-3 three, three shape. The, the 10 will sit kind of in front of everyone here. The winger will start to tuck in a bit too. And you'll see these guys shift over here this time. But they won't shift over any further than this. They will leave chair isolated in a lot of room here. Like the 10 will not come over. He'll hang here. He'll hang centrally. And they will get the ball ping ping and they'll play it into chair. And once they play it into chair here, one of two things will mainly happen. Chair will take the ball, drive down the line, try to create something where then Powell will come and support. Then the 10 will come and support. The 9 will make a run into the box. The 10 might make a run into the box. And the 6 might support. One of those things will happen, but the team will then move forwards in support, right? They will then move forwards as chair drives to that line. Now he will do, obviously if he inverts here, he'll look to the top of the box for options or he'll whip in across to the 10 or he'll drive down the line here, try to whip in across. Oh my God. Let me turn off the circles. He will then get down to the line here and try to whip across in here. He also will sometimes get the ball in this position and look to drive, drive into this area right here. So now I need it into this area right here. And when he gets into this area right here, there is one thing only and one thing only in Ilias Chair's mind, and that is to rip it. He will get the ball, drive into this area here, and he will rip a shot at the goal. He scored against Blackburn doing this. I've seen him score numerous goals doing this. If he inverts, he is going on that right foot and he is crossing or shooting. There is no question about that in his mind. He is dribbling a little bit, crossing and shooting. This happens constantly for QPR. Watch highlights. You will see chair inverting and shooting or crossing constantly down this wing, but he will sometimes try to invert. And if he is covered and there's too many people, Powell will go and make an overlapping run. He'll find Powell and then Powell will make the cross himself. Now the players that get into the box are usually the 10, the striker or the opposite side of the winger. This occurs on the other side too. If they're crossing from the right side, chair will then come into the box. Now he doesn't score many. He has scored a few, but he, do he is, doesn't score many. These players here, generally will sit on the outside you it is not uncommon though to see you'll sorry uh let me just take this off again so it's not uncommon to see um one of these guys making the run so if the ball's on this side here and someone over here is crossing it right the keeper will hit early crosses and there's guys like this in the box You'll see it where, like, say, Chair maybe, or Hodge is on the edge here. This guy will drop and, and cover the, the space. So these guys are on the edge, right? Because QPR likes to have guys on the edge for loose balls. Uh, they'll cross it in here. It gets deflected. This player here will step in and, and strike it or step in and try to create something. And you saw this goal literally against Norwich today happened. Uh, they scored. Colback was there to clean up the pieces and score a goal. So you'll see that happen as well. They have bodies on the edge to clean stuff up and get those extra shots in. They usually are not creating loads of players. Those are like crossing bodies. They normally get three, I'd say. You'll see people like that. You will see uh, Powell as well be in this spot too. Powell will show up here. Dixon Bonner might drift wide or Hayden might drift wide or drift a little bit here, like even deeper at times. And you'll have Powell here as well. They don't want anyone else on this opposite side. If Chair sits a little further out, he'll sit like here. This guy will sit here and you'll see where Powell sometimes comes in and scores the goal because he's the one running into the box to create that extra option. So that's what happens a lot. You won't see the right back to me that it's always Powell who's the much more advanced uh, one there. But that's kind of some of the options they do in terms of creating the opportunities to go forwards and score goals via crosses and stuff like that. Now, another thing to talk about, which the team has done, is in transition, when they look to transition the ball, these guys aren't forward as much. Yada, yada. They're a little deeper, right? So they're all kind of... Deep, Powell's probably up here, Chair's probably around here. Uh, I don't know, this is kind of a bit of chaos right now, but um, that's that's fine, because we're talking in transition. So, what you'll see this happen is, is the striker will run into a half space, right? So he'll be in, say, he's in the right half space here, which, well, the left half, the right defensive half space, the left offensive half space. So he's in the left offensive half space. You will see the striker make a run like this through the middle of the pitch. And this guy here will play the ball to him making the run because their hope is, is that all the defenders, the back four cluster around him because chair is on this side. 
So they know that they're, they're going to cluster. They're going to be like this. He's worried about Willock. He's also not worried about Hodge. The center mid, you're hoping the center mid's kind of here and look clueless. And you're hoping that these are going to come up here because chair's over here too. They're going to try to help support and stop this ball going forwards. But you can get it into the space and the 10 can make the run onto it. And that's something you've seen a little more recently with Hodge and some more dynamic 10s that they have. Dykes was doing that a little bit, not too successfully. But that's what you're seeing a little more now. Of these, also these times, the the winger, the sorry, the the striker runs into those spots, and then you have the ten running through the middle, hoping to have a hoping to have some space. And we show, I'll show you the two goals that are scored that way. Um, QPR score that goal, and uh, we score that goal as well. Similar ideas in terms of the nine getting it and the ten making the run through the middle. Uh, the goal that I have in FM is the ten running through the half space, the nine in the middle, but it's the similar ideas of those motions which we're looking for so that's obviously good in that sense now the thing i also want to talk about is the mid block qpr defend in a mid block this is something that we need to discuss because it's very important so they will defend like so um sorry they will defend in a what was it oh my god i'm losing my mind it's 4141 right yeah 4141 mid block so the 10 will drop in here like this. One of these two players will, will sit. The 9 will be here. The wingers will be like this. They will sit in a mid block like so. We need to get these guys set up properly so we can go through the way the mid block works. Da, 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 da. So they're going to sit like that. Right, so they're like this. They've got their numbers pushed up. So the things that you'll see is, is that if they have the ball here, QPR will have their striker press. So the striker press is high and they will do it. They will do this. So they will, the striker will press high to dictate a side. He's now said, Hey, I want you guys to go to your left side. That's what Dykes is, or Armstrong or Fry is saying. So now he's dictated. They'll move to their left side. You will then see chair move into kind of this space here. The everyone else in the back line is good. You will then see this player here sit, still stay off a bit. And wait, this pass is his bait. He's waiting for the sideways pass. And there also is a player waiting behind here as bait as well. They will be on these guys in the middle waiting as bait, right? So they'll be waiting for these passes. They'll, le they'll be behind the guy, but they're waiting for the pass like this. Step in front, snag it, counterattack ability. Or they'll put pressure, passes goes, goes backwards. And the goal of this is, Sit off, striker dictates the side, and force the team to play passes into the pressure, and then force it backwards. So you slow down the pace of the game, you make the team have to play against you, and you really congest the space in the middle. Because look at all the bodies in this middle area here. The backline also plays a little higher. The backline doesn't play deeper. They play higher and in a mid-block, so they congest the pitch in the middle, and force you to have to go really far over them, which is tough to do, but they have been exposed. Norch did do it to them before, earlier in the season when they played. And a few teams did, but they do, but the, the striker now puts pressure on the center back so they can't do it, but it still, it can happen, but it allow, it forces you to go that really long direct ball at the top, which is really difficult to defend against, um, but also is really difficult to score from because it's a long risky pass where Begovic is hopefully going to sweep it up. If Begovic was a better sweeper. I think they wouldn't have to worry about that. Begovic is not the best sweeper, but it's something that they do, which helps a lot because they also don't have the most pace in the back line. Now, they also uh, will bait this pass here, because if they play it wide here, Willock will press heavily, and he'll force this ball backwards. And what that will do is, is then they'll force the ball backwards, and he'll press high, because if he if he knows that Dykes has this guy covered, this guy has this guy covered, he's going to press hard and force it backwards, or try to win the ball, Be because he knows there's no one behind him that they can play into. If they're sitting off like this, and Dykes is only just kind of put pressure here, he will not go, because he will put pressure... This guy can play it here. Dyke's not close enough. This guy can spin in behind. Boom, Willick's bypassed. Now there's a massive gap. There's a 2v1 on this side here, which you will not see them do. And if they do, it's a mistake. But Willick will sit here, sit on the edge, waiting for this opportunity. Boom, he can press, force it deeper. They can force it. Oh my god. They can force it deeper again. The ball's first forced even deeper. And then you hope there's the long ball. But in that time, the team sits back into their mid-block shape forcing the opposition to move around, do their stuff, and try to find an opening that they want to get through the mid-block over allowing the passing angles through. And that's the whole goal of it. It's to slow the pace down, make the other team have to work to get through you, move around, do a lot of stuff, 
because they want you to keep the ball in this area of the pitch here. They want the ball stuck here in the defensive third. That's where they want the ball stuck. Because the more they can get you to keep the ball in your own defensive third, when you make that mistake, guess where QPR are attacking you from? This area. Not here, not here, here. Meaning you're already attacking them in their own final third. Making it so much easier to get and so much shorter distance and a such easier way to attack. Because also, you now have so many bodies behind the ball that you don't have many people defending it. Sorry, in front of the ball. You don't have many people there to defend it. You only have a few behind the ball while a lot forwards. And that's exactly what QPR want to do. And that's some of the ways they look to do stuff. So, bit on the possession, bit on the scoring goals, bit on the mid block. Um, all those things, great. I think we talked about it. Really happy with the little discussion we've just had. So we're going to get into some clips. We're going to talk about goals, possession, uh, the buildup, kind of showing you some of the weird stuff that Jair does and the way the ball shifts around with Pal inverted. And then into the mid block as well. So let's hop into some of those clips in FMN in real life and take a look at how that works out. Here we're going to look a little bit at the possession. So you can see here, there's that back three that I talked about being created. So you had the, the uh, sorry. You have the back three, so you have the center mid dropping in here to help support. You have Cannon and you have Clark Salter, which is created. You have in the middle here Pal and Dixon and Dizel, who are the two center, the center mid and the left back. You have Clark Salter playing the ball around, trying to find an option. Cannon looking to find someone. He can find the winger out wide. Remember how I told you Willick will drop in to try to help create opportunities? So Willick's dropped in here. They're playing it around the back. They're trying to find an option to switch the ball and get it wide because they're trying to go down the wings. Remember, that was the big thing that they want to do. They try to go into the middle here. They can't, so they're going to shift it wide. Remember I told you that these guys will stay really close together and they'll leave Chair heavily isolated out on that wing? Look what I'm talking about. Chair's heavily isolated out on that wing and they're going to try to now get the ball to Chair where they've got him isolated in space. Chair's calling for the ball. He's asking for it. Can I can get it to Powell? Now look, he can get it to Chair. Boom. Remember what I talked about? He's isolated in this space. There's no one else close to him. He's got a 1v1 against this guy here. And guess what? He's going to go at him. He's going to try to beat him. He's going to try to get a cross off, gets the line, and wins a corner. And that's exactly what I'm talking about with it. The team is trying to possess the ball. They can't go down the right side with numbers. They swing it back across, give it to Chair, who goes direct, aggressive, drives down the line, can't get something, but he wins a corner in the end, and that's still better than nothing. So, we're going to chat about possession. So, as you can see here, the ball's being played down the right side. And there's too many bodies, so they're forced to go back and switch play. And now they switch play into this possessive shape they have. And you can see it here is created, right? This is the three. You see the two center mids with the one pushing wide. Oops, sorry. We'll, we'll move that back slightly. But you can see the two center mids, right? The one push wide. Pals inverted right here. And the three center backs, right? The three remaining center backs that are created. Now, you can see them getting it pushing it wide, and now you have Chair, who's in acres of space on his own, right? He's got no one around him. He's on his own. He's isolated. Pal is here. Colback's just out of screen over here. It's, he's disappeared because we've moved away from him. But there's there's not a lot of people. People are occupying Pal here, but Chair's got a 1v1. He's got the opportunity to drive down this line now and make something happen because there's no one else near him. So he drives forwards. He manages to get by one. Now he's on his own. Looks to cut back, and he pulls that cross we talked about when he cuts back and crosses. Nothing comes of it, but it's exactly what I was saying in terms of they switch the ball to that left side. Powell's inverted. He pulls people's inward. He pulls people away, so there's room. Chair's completely isolated on his own in his own spot. He's able to drive down the line and try to make something happen. So here we have an example of um, a goal scored by QPR. So this is the one that I was talking about in terms of the half space, uh, the, the striker and the 10 using the runs in behind. So you can see here Willock and Cannon playing the ball between them on this wing. Colback in the middle here. You can even see Pal inverted here as well in this middle area here. The ball is played into Dykes. That the 10 is already making that run. All these guys here focused on Dykes. Look at that. They're all focused on him. You can see it here. Even as we move it back a bit, he makes the run, right? Bajetic leaves him because he sees Dykes is going to get on the ball. They're all focused on Dykes. No one's focused on Richards. And he's got a clean run in on goal. Played to Richards. Takes a touch. Finishes well. And that's the thing there. That's what you're talking about. They get distracted by that run. Sorry, they get distracted by the nine. They don't notice the run. Boom. In on goal. Goal scored. So here we have an example of a goal that is scored where we're talking about the 
the goal that's scored with the movement. So right here you can see Armstrong is making that run into the left half space here to the wide channel. He's going to he's gonna hold the ball a little bit here, wait for the runners to go, and you can see Hodge right here in the top of your pitch. You'll see it now. So this is the thing I was I was mentioning here. Armstrong's got the ball. They're all looking at him, right? They're staring at they're staring at Armstrong who's got the ball. Even this guy's staring at him. They're focused on chair. They know there's the danger here with chair. This dude here, th there's a dude up here which you can't see, which is slightly out of picture. I, I just I crop it a little bit just to make it easier because for some reason it doesn't fit. I don't know. My monitor doesn't fit correctly in OBS. This could be I'm just stupid, but bear with me. Um, Hodge is right here making a run. So you see he's making the run right here. This guy is um, up here in terms of there's a defender all the way up here who's just paying attention to the Willick and not to Hodge. Hodge is right here running through the middle. These guys are focusing on Armstrong and Armstrong is going to play this pass to Hodge and they're going to meet perfectly. And you'll see it happen right now. They're so focused on him. The 10 makes the run. Armstrong with a great pass. Hodge runs onto it and slots it home. And how about that? That's exactly the goal we were talking about. Obviously, Richard's a little different, but very similar idea of the striker makes that run into the half space. They're occupying the defenders. The defenders are focusing on them, not focusing on the 10 making that deep run. Boom, 10 runs in. Goal from a one-on-one. -on -one. Here's an example of the mid-block, which I just wanted to show you guys because it's really, really perfect. It's a little short, but it's perfect for what we want to see. So if we go uh, data analyst, we'll zoom in slightly. As can see. So if you look here, here's that mid block. The four, it's more of a two right now because of the way they're pressing, but he's normally, he'll be a little deeper. The, the four, four, two, though, you can kind of see the shape up here. But as it goes, you see here, they're baiting the ball. Dykes is going to set the direction. He's gone this way to set it back, set it to force it this way. And they're baiting the pass. Remember, I told you the guys are close to each other, right? They're close. So the pass will happen but if it does they're close to these people and guess what they're close to that guy richard steps in front he wins the ball and now look they're attacking in an area where they can where there's a lot of bodies they have a lot of chance to go forwards chance to play it into willick where there's space he takes a touch around a defender gets through and scores a goal that's exactly what i was talking about in terms of that mid block they sit off they offer stuff to make it really hard to get through and then you play into that pressure they snag it and they score a goal from it so here we're looking at an example of the mid block. So you can see it here, the 4141 I was talking about, the shape that's created there where they're defending. Everyone is is doing their job, making sure they have a man, making sure they have everyone covered. They're gonna look to play the ball. Now it's played here. Armstrong's gonna put a little pressure and he's gonna set the direction. So you see he's put the pressure, he's make them go to one direction, he's forcing them into one side. Now they're looking to build, and look right here. They've covered everyone. Everyone is covered. He's got someone behind him. He's got someone here. He's got someone here. He's got someone here. He's got someone. He's got someone. He's got someone. They may not all be pressed up against them, but they're there for it. If they pass this try to play, they're going to put pressure. They're going to force that ball backwards. They're making it harder for you. You have to slow it down. You can't play quick because no one's open. And you see here, the 10 drifting out into that space to put pressure and force it backwards. It's not the winger here because there's guys a little deeper. But it's that thing of that one guy stepping out, putting pressure, forcing that ball backwards. And look, see, he forces it backwards, as I'm showing with the arrow. He forces it back to his other center back here, who now tries to get forward. He gets away from Armstrong and plays it, but guess what? He plays that into pressure. This guy's covered. He's not got a free pass, though he's he's managed to get around someone and play someone. But still, everyone's got pressure on them. Someone's covered here. And yet, yeah, Norwich get it lucky here. QPR do commit the foul, but still, he's got pressure on the guy. And the foul's committed, but still, the pressure's on them. It's not an easy pass. It's difficult to get through, and they're going to foul you if you think you can get through anyways. So, uh, as you guys can see, here's how we did. They had 69 goals scored, 67 conceded, um, which is pretty good. They finished ninth overall. So, for a team that, in the beginning of the season, was expected to finish 22nd in the league, we got ninth place, which is great to see. Um, really happy to see that. I don't know how Reggie Cannon is worth that much money. That's absurd. Um, but yeah, that's uh, how it is. Dykes got the most goals, Chair got the most assists, Field the best pass completion percentage, and Begovic and Dykes with the most man of the match awards. Um, team did really well. Uh, third round by Brentford and second round by West Brom. Not incredible, but, you know, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't expect them to go too far in the cup. But, you know, Knights not terribly far away, and they're too, not too far off Ips, which as well. 
So overall, I'd say it's a pretty good season. They had a pretty of a poor run to end the season here, which maybe could have projected them, projected them a little higher up. But you never know. Definitely a rough second half of the season. But uh, again, I mean, it's pretty even in terms of what you'd expect from from a team 21, 7, and 18. Not the greatest, but not the worst. I mean, pretty uh, pretty similar to, I'd say, how QPR are. Um, but yeah, I mean, we take a little bit look at the squad here. We see the players that play the most, Pal, Begovic, Dykes, Cook, uh, Cook, Kobach, and then Chair. And then on top of that, the most goals, you had Dykes, you had Willick, who plays on the right, Chair, who plays on the left, Richard, who I think played through the middle at the 10. Yeah, played at the 10. Uh, and then you had Pal at left back, Duke McKenna, who probably played off the right as well. Yeah, played off the right uh, as well with uh, Willick. Um, and yeah, and then in terms of most assists, you had Chair and you had Pal, who were both on the left side. Uh, you had Richards through the middle, Willock on the right, Dykes uh, through the middle, Cannon on the right, Smith on the right. I'm surprised didn't play as much. I would have expected Smith to play more on the right. But again, I can't do that. I can't adjust that. I would have had Smith come off the bench first. For some reason, Duke McKenna was first off the bench, which surprises me because Smith should really be first off. How? FM has something to explain to me. How this man does not have, like, 18, I don't know. The man, he's a bullet in a straight line. But... But yeah, that's uh, just giving you a bit of idea who the goal scorers are. This is pretty similar to real life uh, in how QPR have kind of stuff. But it it's also hard for me to say all the stats because I I don't unfortunately I unfortunately don't have something that's that in depth that can give me all the stats since Cifuentes was here. So it's a little difficult. But just to give you guys some idea of stuff. Um, if we do go to some other games. Oh, they actually going to replay against Brentford. A little bit of a London derby. Be Peter on the first leg. Um, if we look at some recent ones here. We look at some of the uh, the passing networks. We can see the heavy network down the left side, through the middle as well, getting the ball out to the left. Um, unfortunately, Dizel is too central. He needs to be a little further out left. But it's uh, it's quite annoying, but it's how it happens at times. Those guys, not as nicely together, but Richard's getting a little too far forward at times. But it worked pretty worked pretty well in terms of getting that kind of left triangle. In essence, I'm having him, he's supposed to push forward because Chair will tuck in, as we talked about earlier. Chair drops into the space here, so if you have the two of them up there, it allows for a lot better uh, combination play. Now, Chair doesn't drop in as much, but unfortunately, that's just not something I can get the game to do. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just a little bit there. We can take a look at the um, heat map. Sorry. I always click that wrong because in my head, I'm looking at the players. So we look at average positions with the ball. Chair annoyingly is far out wide, but you have these guys higher which you want. You have Pal up in this space here, which is good to see. You have Dizel here. Um, this should be, yep, that sticks in Bonner, which is good. So that's the deep line playmaker. That's the DM. And that's the that's the other player, which is what you want to see. You Remember we talked showed earlier that you kind of have that line of those three in the middle. These guys a little further out, and then the uh, right back pushed further wide. So that's kind of what you have there. And Willick normally tends to invert a little bit, but he stays wider before usually coming in. And Chair should be a lot tighter here. But it's similar. It's close to what we're looking for. It's just not perfect because, unfortunately, some of the roles don't work right, in my opinion, to get exactly what you want to want to get from QPR, which sucks. But I think it's kind of what you have to deal with sometimes. It's not always a perfect combination of those things. But you can see there a little bit. We can take a look at this one as well, uh, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So if we go 45 minutes, we go QPR instead. Um, similar thing, pal tucking in, chair should really be around here. These two kind of up here where they can both make runs, being in almost as two nines. Willock stretching the play, Dixon Bonner in that right half space, Dizelle in the middle, pal over here on the left. And it's pretty much where we want to see them. It's mostly what we talked about is being the shape we want to see. So pretty good in that sense. It fits it pretty well in terms of what we want to see and how we have stuff working, which is great. So now into the tactic itself. Um, it's a four, two, three, one custom slate with two DMS. Uh, in goal is Asmir Begovic, who was goalkeeper on defend with take fewer risks. Begovic is not good in possession at all. So he's encouraged to make very, very minimal risk when in possession. Right back is Reggie Cannon, who is stay wider and get further forward. 
Uh, he obviously stays wider. He tends to t stay on the touchline a little more and help assist in the play as this guy tends to sit in this right half space here to receive the ball before transitioning it forwards. So that's usually the callback role um, as of most recently. Uh, this is where Cook and Clark Salter have been playing. They're just basic ball playing defenders on um, no additional instructions here. Nothing needed. They're on defend. On the left side is Pal inverted wingback on attack. I don't think there's any more instructions you need. In all honesty, you probably don't need roam from position on here. Uh, that's it, but it's impossible to get off. But yeah, there's nothing really else you can add. The only thing you might want to add is to less often possibly. But in reality, Powell likes to get forwards. He will sometimes overlap chair. He will sometimes underlap chair, but he likes to get into this space right here usually and allow chair to be isolated out on the wing. So it's pretty common. If the ball goes down this side, he acts more as a normal wing back. Um, the right DM is a halfback on defend with tackle harder. Again, this is the Jack Colback role, the Sam Field role, that aggressive kind of ball winner guy, but also does a shift helping possess the ball, moving it around. You'll see Colback drop in here, 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 really to help assist in possession, never into the back line, but in front of the back line or around it to move the ball, create these triangles along the back line. Now here you have usually Dixon Bonner playing in this role, which is stay wider and tackle harder. He likes to drift into these areas here to help out because Powell will be a lot higher up in possession. Powell will be up around here in possession sometimes and Chair will drop in here to almost be a center mid at times. So Dixon Bonner will shift out wide to be kind of that left back role to assist in possession at times as well. So he's a DM on support, stay wider, tackle harder. Uh, I would encourage if you are down in games, you can go wing back on attack and then DM or Sakuna Volante on support as well with get through forward. That will be a little more aggressive to get you the ball forwards. On the right, we have winger on support with close down more. This is due to in the mid block, which we talked about, where these guys will help press in more to push the ball to the other side of the pitch when they're pressing in this mid block. So that's why he's on close down more. No additional instructions. Unfortunately, I would like to say um, invert, but he doesn't, not, he doesn't always do it when he has the ball off the ball. He sometimes inverts. I wish there was a way to just say either of those, but it doesn't really work. And I felt that the uh, wide midfielder, uh, Rem, sorry, Ram Deuter, didn't really work uh, very well at all. It just didn't, I don't know, like, it it, it had, it sort of, but it just didn't work in testing at all. So I also feel because Willick drops in more too. This is what happens when you're playing with two guys that are like not wingers, but not tens. They're like kind of guys that play in the half spaces. And in the channels more, they it just doesn't. It's hard to get them the true role. But that's what Willick plays. Here is where Dykes has been playing actually, and this is the the hot Joe Hodge role now that he's signed from Wolves. Um, close more tackle harder. This is because if you watch when Dykes played that plays that role primarily, he's super aggressive, really trying to tackle and be really aggressive in this middle of the park. Also aggressive because he's attacking. We want this get further forward because if we talk about they make runs in behind when that striker drops in and gets the ball in these half spaces, he will get it, make those runs in behind, which uh, I don't know if you, I don't know if I forget if I should, uh, forget if uh, you guys, if I mentioned to watch it, but there's a great example of this where Armstrong and Hodge link up for a goal against Blackburn. On the left, we have Ilyas chair roll, which is inverted winger on support with close down more, shoot more often, roam from position and, cl and, uh, cross more often, not cl close down more, run from position, shoot more often, cross more often. This is because Chair is the heartbeat of this team. He is given the ball at every opportunity, and he is encouraged to cross. He's encouraged to shoot. He's encouraged to do everything. So we want him to do these more often Um, So because you will see him get the ball, drive forward, cut in here, cross, shoot. If he can't go this way, he goes down the line and crosses. If he, he does a bajillion things. So we want him doing all these things more and more and more, just trying to do as much as he can, as much as he can, as much as he can. Because it's a high volume of that. He's got to be the mo guy with the most touches, most chances on the ball. Finally, pressing forward on attack. No additional instructions needed here. I don't think there's anything. You could do shoot less often if you want uh, and dribble more. But I felt they didn't really fit uh, the way. Because some of the guys are slightly different. And I don't think Frey is going to be one who's going to be dribbling more as much as well. But yeah, that is the player instructions and the roles. Again, custom slate tactical style. The mentality is on po is on a balanced mentality. This is because QPR are not looking to always dominate possession, but um, they will sometimes kind of hang around in game, sit in this mid block and look to counter from it. And I feel this is the best uh, to deal with that. Now in possession, the team is fairly wide. This is because you'll see them primarily attacking down the widest areas of the pitch a lot. You'll see a lot of combination play in the left and right areas of the pitch, not too much as centrally. 
Um, there, they tend to go kind of wide before doing this. You'll see this a lot with this team. Folks play down the left and play out of defense. Fuentes encourages the team to play with the ball, especially playing out of defense, as well as always going down the left where Ilias Chair is, who is the main man. Finally, slightly higher tempo. The team does like to move the ball around a little quicker, but uh, that's about it. I would say short passes at times, but they do play a fair amount of long balls into the channels for the striker, so I wouldn't really worry too much about having it on shorter. I think standard fits this pretty perfectly. Um, no additional instructions at all. I think everything is pretty much set there. They don't need to add much. They're pretty they're pretty balanced, balanced into what they want to do. Now, the team does occasionally counterpress, and I would encourage this if you do are struggling in games, push the lineup and counterpress, but normally they do not always look to counterpress, don't always look to regroup. They do look to counter when the ball has been won, and they do always distribute to the center backs with a short kick, Asmir Begovic rolling it to either one. Occasionally, the center backs do take the ball and kick it to a player out wide as well with a short kick, but again, I don't think that's possible in FM. Finally, out of possession, we are talking about the mid block. So, what just plays on the higher line, usually on his mid block? Um, it does kind of hurt them at times. Uh, they've conceded some goals of balls in behind, but that's what the striker is for to stop that from happening. They are aggressive in the tackle, uh, especially in midfield. So that's why we have get stuck in there on and the higher line, obviously to help adjust that higher line and no other additional instructions. Um, with that being said, so that is how the tactic plays out. That is how everything is set up there. Um, I think it worked out really well, obviously, for finishing ninth after being expected to finish 22nd and doing as well as they did. I'm very happy with that. Sure, there's a few little tweaks you can make to make it a little more meta, but I think this fits it very, very well in terms of what I'm looking for. Uh, it's interesting that there's not too many um, in individual instructions needed, but I think the team plays pretty close to what, we're, what we see in real life, and it's nice to see. And also, as you do see here, the team did really well, hitting up as much as second and third at times, so... There was a really good. There was times where the team really did quite exceptional and slowly just kind of fell off. But you know, it's uh, it's good to see. There were stretches here. The team did really well at points, and I think there's a lot to build on. And if you'd got some better players in, this team would be a lot better. But but yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy that one. Um, and and yeah, time to roll the outro and uh, say a big massive thank you for 1K subscribers. Well, everyone, I wanted to say a massive massive thank you to all of you. Um. It's a, it's really just insane to think that I've hit this point, um, with all of this and everything that has been achieved. I mean, uh, to hit 1k subscribers is, is something that's mental to me. I did this as, as a fun little thing I wanted to do during COVID with my friend. Um, we started it together and it just tried to make it into something. It didn't really turn into anything. I had a stop and start kind of thing going. It didn't really turn out. I had some few, little spike here, little spike there, but nothing that I was like too attached to but i i always complain about tactic videos and and stuff like that and i want to like i've always wanted to have a tactic video i want them to go in depth like uh really describe and be in depth about stuff and and really give you all that extra detail because i feel it's really great it's really nice to see because then you can understand why the tactic is played what works about it why it's been designed i hate the two to three minute ones they're not my thing and again look they could be your thing you may just want to get the tactic and plug and play and that's fine with me do to your heart's content. That's what video games are for. Play them how you want. I could care less if you don't like how I do stuff. But to me, this is how I want tactic videos to be done. I really enjoy them. I really enjoy doing it like this. It takes me a crap ton of time to do, and I don't love that, but it's exciting. I like to get to work on stuff. I don't, I, unfortunately, I've left my club that I worked for before, and it's been tough finding work, but it's fun and it's just, it's great to do, and I love doing these videos, and they really get me working on stuff, get my mind ticking over. Like, I wish FIFA was fun. I wish EAFC was good this year. It sucks. It's the worst game in the world. And I, I every time I do tactic videos, I want to go and play. I want to do football. I want to do more and more and more of it. And I just so enjoy it. And I love that I've been doing these videos and you guys have given me that outlet to do it. And I cannot thank you enough for it. Um, Yeah, I just appreciate all the love. And I can't believe that I have a tactic request document that has so many requests that I can't even keep track. Like, there's so many things in there that I'm, like, losing my mind in terms of adding stuff. So, it's amazing. The feedback from everyone and all this stuff is brilliant. I'm loving all of it, and I just can't thank you guys enough. And, yeah. Throw the QPR could be by 1K1. It means a lot to me. I got the t uh, sweatshirt on, obviously, from this season when I was there. I got my Elias Cher jersey, Austin jersey, GF Cameron jersey uh, over there in my, in my uh, closet with all my stuff. Uh, where's the... I got my uh, 
QPR scarf up above me. Um, I mean, I have my, you guys can sort of, sorry, it's this. No, it's there. I'm not good at this. I'm doing this backwards. Those, that little thing right there is my old name tag from when I worked there. So I have tags, I have stuff from being there and stuff. So it's, it's a club that means the world to me and it's awesome to be able to bring you guys this 1k subscriber special about it. So I thank you so much for that. Um, it's been an awesome one. I hope you enjoyed the tactic. And if you did, please remember to uh, give a like and sub and a uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, feel free to drop the QPR hate. I I understand it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, Derby fans, I know you'll be coming for me. Uh, but uh, I understand it. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy the tactic. I think it was an interesting one. It was a little tough to finally get it to all work right, but uh, I think once I got the the little tweaks going, it finally worked. It's not totally perfect because I don't think you could ever get what Chair does to work in the game. Just the fluidity of his movements and the the craziness that he roams is just impossible to put into this game. I don't think it's even achievable. It's like with the Dinius tactic. But thank you so much, guys, for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you do want to catch up on more tactic videos, hit that notification bell. And go to the playlist link below where you can find all the realistic tactic videos in the world that you want or the just in-game tactics that I made for fun. Uh, there's tons of them. You can download as many as you want. There's just a crap ton. So feel free to get into any of those, download those, and feel free to check out some of my series as well. I have one on uh, Evian, uh, Thun on Evian, um, Thun, Thun on Evian. I, I can't pronounce it right. I apologize. I'm terrible at this. And Vacker Innsbruck. Uh, the a French and Austrian side, both, uh, one who I have quite a sentimental feeling towards the French one and the Austrian one, just a cool story. So feel free to check out either of those. Um, they're going amazing. We're already in the first division on one and going to be shortly in the first division with the other. So it's, uh, we're killing it. We are doing amazing. So feel free to check those out. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching everyone. I hope you guys did enjoy and I'll be sure to catch you guys in the next tactic video.